Have you ever wondered why your Florida homeowner's insurance is so high? Today I will tell you three reasons why you're probably paying a high premium for your Florida homeowner's insurance. Homeowners in Florida pay the highest premium in the country, nearly three times the national average, according to the Insurance Information Institute, an industry group. Premiums in Florida are rising fast, about 33% each year, than the typical U.S. annual increase of 9%. Six insurance carriers have declared insolvency this year alone. Others have dropped customers or stopped writing new policies altogether. For Florida homeowners, this results in fewer home insurance companies and increased premiums. When a company goes insolvent, the Florida Insurance Guarantee Association, FIGA, takes on any claims that still need to be paid by that company. In late August, FIGA's board and the Florida Office of Insurance Regulation approved a 0.7% assessment to help cover the cost of open claims associated with the liquidated companies. That's the second assessment this year with a 1.3% assessment approved in March. Homeowners will pay these fees regardless of the insurance company they're with. Florida insurers are canceling policies, leaving the state or liquidating at a rapid pace. Florida has always presented a risky market to home insurance companies due to the high threat of widespread weather-related damages. But the current crisis is caused by a number of factors reaching a boiling point at the same time. The average premium for homeowners has topped $4,000 per year in five different Florida counties, mostly in the Miami and Palm Beach areas, according to the state report from July. In Monroe County, home of the Florida Keys, the average premium is $6,700. Nationally, home insurance costs $1,600 per year on average. Let us know in the comments below if your homeowner's insurance has increased in the past year or canceled altogether. These are the three major reasons why you're probably paying so much for your homeowner's insurance policy. Insurance fraud, roof age, and storm risk. You're probably asking yourself how insurance fraud affects you. The biggest issue right now in Florida is home insurance fraud, driven by fraudulent roofing claims. A proclamation from the office of Governor Ron DeSantis knows that although Florida only accounts for 9% of the country's home insurance claims, it is home to 79% of the country's home insurance lawsuit. Many of these lawsuits are fraudulent. This is how this scam generally works. First, roofers canvass neighborhoods and offer inspections to unsuspected homeowners. These contractors inevitably find damage on the roof and often promise a free roof to the homeowner, claiming that they can have the home insurance deductible waive. Homeowners are pressured to sign an assignment of benefits form, giving contractors right to file an insurance claim on their behalf. A claim adjuster from the insurance company inspects the alleged damage. The adjuster either finds no damage or far more minimal damage that the contractor found, and the claim payout is less than what the contractor demanded. The contractor brings a legal action against the insurance company, demanding a claim payout for the contractor's original quote. Remember, the homeowner signed the benefits of the policy to the contractor, so the contractor doesn't need the homeowner's permission to do this. The insurance company now has a choice. It can pay the legal cost to fight the lawsuit or pay the cost to settle out of court. Either way, the insurance company loses money due to the legal action. These schemes are real and are happening more frequently, which puts more and more financial pressure on the insurance company, especially in a state with high claim costs due to weather-related events. Florida property insurance are projected to pose a cumulative underwriting loss of $1.7 billion for 2021 due to the runaway litigation costs. It's no wonder why so many companies are going insolvent or leaving the state before they reach that point. Another major factor is roof age. Some insurance companies, instead of leaving altogether, are tightening their underwriting restrictions to lessen the risk of these scams. This may be the reason why several companies, including Southern Fidelity, Progressive, and Universal, have chosen to continue operations in Florida, but have not renewed tens of thousands of policies. However, companies are not prohibited from denying coverage solely based on roof age if the roof is fewer than 15 years old it has a life expectancy of five years at the time of the policy decision. That said, insurers would have to decide if they're comfortable with these restrictions or if they will continue to exit Florida. As you know, storm risk is one major factor that affects your homeowner's premium. Risk has always been a consideration for home insurance companies in Florida. The state's geographical location means that it could get hit from either side by a hurricane. Because the peninsula is so thin, even homes in the interior counties are not entirely protected. To make matters worse, Fraudulent claims may be more common after severe storms. Hurricane Ian made landfall on September 28th as a powerful Category 4, causing widespread damage. The full effect of the storm may not be known for weeks or months, but the damage could push the home insurance market into a collapse due to the increased home repair expenses, including the potential of fraudulent roof claims. Hurricane Ian could cause even more insurance to leave the Florida market. Even as damage estimates rise, officials have expressed confidence that insurers will be able to pay out hurricane Ian claims. 
It's too early to know exactly how much the claims will cost. One analytics firm estimated that winning storm surge losses will be between $28 and $47 billion. Another estimate of the total loss, private insurance, put the total as high as approximately $63 billion. If rates continue to rise by 30% or more, as they have done for the many Floridians in recent years, some Floridian homeowners may end up paying more for insurance than they do for their mortgage. That's just not sustainable. We're hoping legislatures are doing everything they can to curb this crisis and make homeowners insurance affordable again. Into the next one.